Hello, Timothy. Hey, I can hear you. Hi, hi, hi there. Sorry I look old. <laughs> no worries. Nice to see no you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. I am recording this. I hope that's okay with you. Yeah, I can record it as well. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Recording in progress. Oh, do I get a copy of this recording? I, I've got a little MP3 recorder on the screen, or you you can do both. I can send you the the other one too. Okay, okay to thank you. It. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm puzzled about the baptismal formula. Um, thank you. Okay, puzzled. Um, if you're talking about the Aramaic um, blessing formula, is that what you're referring to? Um, no, the baptismal formula in the Book of Acts. Oh, that's where you're going to go to, though. Yes. Is the Aramaic blessing yes. formula. That's, that's the whole thrust of your argument. It is based off that. Because uh, there's the original form and then there's shorthand version. You're going to do the same with baptism. Well, it's up to me to make my my point, not not you to speak for me. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sure. clarifying. I've been watching your videos. Yes, sure. So sure. I'm clarifying. Yes, I'm. I'm also. I'm also puzzled um, myself. I'm puzzled about your comment about apostolic uh, uh, scholars. Where Where did you get that source wise? Uh, what comment about apostolic scholars? You said that there is none one as Pentecostal scholars. There's no. You said in the previous video, unless you recant that. Um, no, I did. I did make a comment in in text, and I think I might have said that on on video. As far as I know, they have no scholars of note. There's no professors. At any major university or any major theological so, seminary, see, I, see, I could, could I finish? Because yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, if we if we don't allow each other to finish, there's no point in me even speaking. Um, as far as I know, there are no scholars of note in the oneness movement. You know, there's no equivalent of F. F. Bruce or Howard Marshall or Lenski or Robertson, who wrote word pictures of the New Testament. There are no scholars equal to that. Um, anyone can pick up a PhD. You just have to pay a certain amount of money. I'm not saying there aren't real people with earned degrees in the oneness movement. There are. But um, just because somebody says, I have a PhD, doesn't mean they are a scholar. It could be an unaccredited PhD, you see, from a diploma mill. So that's the point I'm making. I don't see any scholars, the equal of an F.F. F. Bruce or a Lenski, a Howard Marshall... A Robertson of word pictures in the New Testament. I don't see any equal of that in Bible Way, True Jesus Church, United Pentecostal Church. Thank, th thank you for your patience, sir. Are, are you? Yeah. Are you familiar with Doctor Brickle? Doctor Who? Brickle. No. Jeffrey Brickle. I think his name. So he's one of the leading scholars in, in a certain field that he discovered. It was on the uh, inflection of the Greek. And he, he's actually wrote a dissertation on that. Yes, he has a PhD. I know in your mind it's not the same as F.F. Bruce or I. Howard Marshall, which, which is kind of ironic because I remember about I. Howard Marshall. I have his uh, commentary right here, and it's kind of ironic because you made a comment about uh, baptism in Acts 19, and I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he would disagree with your assessment. Okay. Your previous assessment about how... Um, that is talking about a shorthand Trinitarian formula. He's not, it's not referring well, to that at all. In fact, it's less to do with water baptism. It was more to do with actually the um, baptism of the Holy Spirit, as you would see in the beginning of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget, John, it's up uh, to me to make my, my position um, in a two-way discussion. You make your position, I make my position. You don't speak for both, for both sides. I hope that's fair and reasonable. But you did make your position multiple times in videos. I just did my research. Yes. Like, like you can correct me if that's not what you believe, but you have yet to disagree with my assessment of your um, your belief system so far. You're just saying, you just keep repeatedly saying, uh, it's up to me to make the discussion, and my uh, argument, but you've already made your argument time and time again on previous videos in recording. So... Why do I have to well, wait for you to say to me? I, when I don't. I don't know. It? I. I don't know what you mean by that. Perhaps if we're going to talk, it would be fair to say, "Well, Robert, explain your position. I explain my yeah. position now, then, then, and then, then you 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 respond to that, and you you explain okay, your that. position." I'll do that. Uh, you tell me your position, because because apparently I have some misunderstandings. Uh, 
Um, how much how much time would I have? Because I don't want to be, you, you know, I don't want to preach a mini sermon. But how much how much time would you allow me to speak? Give me um, as your starting reflection. Give me about a five to ten minute a set, uh, like uh, overview. Oh, okay. Do you want to go first? If, if you or, can. Yes. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? I prefer you to go first. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I would understand. That the Bible has a form of shorthand. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the ironic blessing formula of Numbers 6, 23 to 26, which I have alluded to before. Mm -hmm. Now, it's alluded to in Scripture, but never in the Old Testament do we ever find it repeated. I won't give all the references, but we find in Deuteronomy 10, 8 that they blessed in his name. Or in Deuteronomy 21.5, they blessed in the name of the Lord. That's a direct reference back to the Aaronic Six blessing formula, as I would understand it. Mm -hmm. I believe that Christian baptism echoes this. So the threefold blessing of Matthew 28.19 is alluded to by biblical shorthand at Acts 2, 8, 10 and, and 19. Mm -hmm. I would understand that because Christ... Christ is fully God and Christ, Christ represents the Father and the Holy Spirit as well as, as uh, of course, himself. What I do not believe is that Christ is only a third of God, that you split God into three parts. I do not believe that. I do not believe Christ is a part of God. I believe Christ is holy God. And so Christ, Christ represents Father. He represents himself, the Son. Uh, and he represents the the Holy the Holy Spirit. Um, when you look at the, I, I think that's very very Im, Im, important. That that um, the one name of Matthew twenty eight nineteen is shared fully by the three by Father Son and Holy Spirit. Each is fully representative of the other because each is fully God. That's very important. Christ, who is the Son of God, is fully God. He's not a part of God. And so yeah. he fully represents the Father and the Holy Spirit. Um, when you look at the Acts passages, um, they differ. It's Lord Jesus and Acts 2.38. I think I've had two minutes so far. It's Lord in Acts 10.48. It's Lord Jesus in Acts 8.16 and 19.5. Um, and even not only do those change, but the Greek prepositions change. Now, I looked at Tyndale House Greek New Testament, published 2017 by Crossway Books, and the Society of Biblical Literature, SBL New Testament, published in 2010. The, the Greek prepositions in read epi in Acts 2.38, Ice in Acts 8.16 and 19.5, and N in Acts 10.48. To me, this would be not a, some fixed baptismal formula, because we don't find, and they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't find those exact words repeated anywhere in the book of Acts. Surely this is a reference to authority upon um, the person of Christ, because Christ is fully God. And Christ is representative of God because he is God. Um, so I think that these these renderings in the book of book, book of Acts are far too flexible to be some fixed baptismal formula. Also, I think I've got three. Have I got two minutes left? Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Um, in Acts 2.38, there's no water which is a big problem for making this a baptismal verse. The actual baptisms take place in Acts 2, 41, which says, basically, uh, let's just go there, Acts 2, 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptised, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. There's no baptisms in, in Acts 2, 38. Peter's telling them to go and get baptised in the name or upon the authority of, of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a big point. There's no water in Acts 2.38. Yeah. 
And how could Peter be giving the people who are going to be baptised the baptismal formula? I mean, Peter's not telling them, I want you to go and baptise yourself in the name of Jesus, and then people dunk themselves underwater. The whole idea of baptism is that somebody else dunks you in the water, and it's representative of your joining the church. So yeah. baptism isn't something you do on your own. Um, it's joining oh. It's joining the church. Those are the main points. I do believe there is a, um, a clear indication that however they were baptised, I think I've got a minute left, in Acts 19, 2 and 3, it's very clear that whatever the baptismal formula is, or the authority for baptism, okay, I'm happy to be, you know, to, to look at that, I'm still learning myself, whatever it is, it must contain the words Holy Spirit. Because Paul meets certain disciples here, they're disciples of John. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you, when, you, um, when, you were, when you believed? And they said in Acts 19 too, we have not so much as heard as whether there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul then asked them in verse 3, Acts 19, 3, how in, 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 into what then were you baptised? And the conclusion must be that whatever baptism is, whether it's a baptismal formula or the authority for baptism, it contains the words Holy Spirit. Finally, um, oneness Pentecostals damn other oneness Pentecostals to hell because they're baptized the wrong way. The true Jesus Church is probably the world's largest oneness sect. It's hard to know the true size, but it's probably larger than the UPC. It's based in China. They baptize with the chin resting, resting upon the chest. They, bat, they, they damn to hell all other oneness Pentecostals, including the UPC. There are other smaller oneness sects who say, well, English, Jesus didn't speak English. He would have spoken Aramaic. And so they have an Aramaic or a Hebrew form of words, but they can't agree as to what that form of words is. So oneness sects tend to damn other oneness sects to hell. Oh, and one final thing would be the Didache. In chapter 7, you find exactly the same thing as Acts 2.38 and, and Matthew 28.19 and the Aaronic Blessing Formula. It says very clearly that the um, baptisms were by a threefold pouring on of water in the name of the Father. Then you poured the water again in the name of the Son and you poured water again in the name of the Holy Spirit. The Didache, chapter 7, from the early first century to the early second century but then go on in chapter seven and it just says that they were baptized in the name of the lord i'll actually have to check up on um i can give you the exact rendering but i think i'm up to my five minutes so i'll after my time later i'll pass the mic on oh so you're done okay yeah. i thought you were making a speaking statement there um well for starters, I cannot speak for all um, one is Pentecostals, apparently. I don't know anyone in uh, China. I don't know their organization. I only am bound by what I know and I understand. Um, secondly, uh, at least from my understanding of one is Pentecostals, we do not have this magical formula of Jesus' name baptism. It's more so that it has to be in the name of Jesus. It doesn't have to be, you shall, this is the specific way you have to word it. The name of Jesus has to be enunciated because it's by his power. So that's, that, that would come out, uh, that would be my stance there with that. So I can't, it's not some magical formula. I would agree with you there. But to say that because you're going, you're attacking one extreme, that you have to go completely the other extreme, it, it doesn't line up. As far as the Aramaic priesthood goes um, and, the, and the blessing, if you notice, it, it's all in the name of the Lord. They go, Lord, Lord, Lord. It's one name. Whereas if you're going the baptismal formula, uh, according to what you would, you, at least you would say, according to Matthew 28 19 would be in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's three different titles. So what happens here is that you're taking two things and you're automatically linking them together and there's no real bridge there. At least like from my understanding, I would have to see some uh, scholarship on that. Um, based off a point in uh, your thing on Acts 19, my struggles with that would be, you said that the Holy Spirit has to be in, uh, has to be in there in the baptismal formula. Am I am I wrong about that, or am I correct? Is that is that a, is that a right assessment? Well, it's in the Didache. Uh, you pour water three times in the name of the Father. Well, I'm after you, you in Acts nineteen. 
Oh, Acts, Acts, Acts 19. Well, it, it says Holy Spirit. Let me just read it. Act, oh, sorry. It's your, 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 your time to speak. Sorry. Um, yes. 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 So that's what you're saying. I'm just making sure. The problem with that is the context with that is he's referring to John's baptism, which John does this whole like thing with that, too. His was baptism uh, with water unto repentance. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire is talking about the spirit reception. So it's not it's less of talking about what you're saying, like uh, baptizing. It has to be in the name of the Holy Spirit. It's more talking about spirit reception baptism. And what and that, in- that's greater link because you have that in Luke in the beginning of Luke it says that and then it connect and then the author Luke connects that in Acts 19 so to make this assumption that it has to be just this shorthand version and, and the spirit must be enunciated over somebody when they're baptized not only kind of contradicts your logic that there is not some special formula at least that's what I'm understanding some special formula because you're saying you're, you're blasting oneness for having a special formula, but then you're creating a special formula of yourself, from what I understand. And that is uh, based out of one verse that can be disputed in different ways, because in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, as oneness Pentecostals, yeah, we believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. That's, that's why we can say that that is Jesus right there, because he's the fullness of the Godhead. He's not just one part or one person of this Trinitarian triune God, but he, he is the fullness of the Godhead. And, and, and like I would say with the, the whole like father son language, you, you're right. There is a difference between the father and the son, but not in persons. And it's not, it's not the same as modalism in the early centuries because they believed that there was a father. Then it trans- no, 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 no. You have this one God. He's playing in these different roles in salvation history. And again, you can go back to John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. You got the word Logos in there. That's not, that right there is like the statement of God, the um, proclamation of God, the, the plan of God. And in the beginning, God did have a plan of salvation for us. He did have a plan for humanity. And that plan was with him. And that plan wasn't just with him. That plan was him. He was the plan. God, Yahweh, was the plan of salvation. You see that in Matthew 21, uh, 1, 21. So you, you see all these statements, and you start coming in together, like, it doesn't, like, yes, I see what you're trying to say, and I see where you're coming from, but at the same time, it's not the most probable answer. It, there's, there's just no way. There's too much going against it. And, and to speak of, like, Al, I, Howard Marshall and stuff, he says right here, like, and I'm gonna, I'm not going to quote him verbatim. You can go back. You, I'm could, sure you're familiar with his commentary. So could could you give him. the exact reference page number and reference yes. this? Yes, let me get to it. So, like, you know how commentaries work. He goes verse by verse. So when you look at the first part of uh, Acts chapter 19, he goes into it. And basically what he's showing here... What is the reference? This is this is a commentary on Acts like, by hey, Ian Howard Marshall, yes? Yes, the commentary on Max. It's I'm going to say... I'm going to say just read past from pages uh, three. What's the reference? What do you mean by that? Is is it the Tyndale commentary? Oh. You um, need to give the full reference. Tyndale New Testament commentary. Okay. And and, and you're going to go from uh, pages like 305, I would look at that discussion, to about 308. Well... And basically, he he's not he's not. I'm not saying like, oh, he just right there. He's a. I mean, it's kind of vague. What? It's kind of vague. I mean, I could I, I could quote books. I could quote I books for you yet. to read. It doesn't mean that. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. If I just give you references, I could say, "Well, read this book, page so and so to so and so, and read that book, yet. page so." It, 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 it's kind I of vague. Finished the point yet? Right. I'm, I do apologize. Okay. Anyways, so like, yes. I'm sorry that I'm going to give you a vague. Um, I, I share something with you. I am also dyslexic, so I'm not going to read it right in front of you, but I'm going to give you the exact reference. And please tell me if I'm wrong. I'm, at the end of the day, I want to know truth just as much as you do. I know you think I'm two-faced. I know you think that everything I believe is two-faced, but and that's okay. I, I never said that to you. Please. Please don't put words in my mouth. Pentecostals. You said all one Pentecostals are two-faced. Did I? You said that in your videos. 
You say all that every time I pick different things. Yes. So, like, how does that not encompass me? Um, I think I think I stated that all oneness Pentecostals deny the divinity of the Son of God, and they de- deny well. the divine attributes of the Son of God. Well. I've made I I've made over three and a half thousand videos. I can't remember what I've said in all of them. Um, you said it twice in the, in the most recent videos too. You you said that we're all two faced, and that we're, like you you trust which me, you know video the authority on this because you were um, the most recent one where you the, called headquarters. No, that's, that's not the most that. recent one. You mean where I spoke to the director of communication? The, I, I, I phoned yeah. twice the UPC. I phoned the yeah. director of communications at the UPC. The first one was in the um, Church Folk in Dialogue series. One of 511. I yeah. spoke on the Oneness Doctrine. And then I had a brief telephone call with the same gentleman, the director of communication, the UPC. I think it was yeah. 566, if I if I remember. Maybe. But it was, it was my, my, I misspoke. It wasn't the most recent one, but it was one recently within the last year, within the last five months. I, I did get to listen to that one. And you did say that. And you said in another one, I can't remember. But right. we can we can um, put that okay. aside. It's just my point is, is that like you make these broad statements. About what all what one is going to cost belief, but but it's not it's not a fair assessment. First off, um, as you can already tell, I, I think differently than some of the people that you have talked to on the phone, because I've heard some of those. I, I admit some some people sound foolish. They do. But to make that the epitome of oneness Pentecostalism and say that we're all like this, or or even like just just saying that, I think I think it, it's not a fair assessment of us. If um, I if I have said that, yeah. then I can see your point. You must understand that I, I am not a scholar. I don't have biblical Greek and Hebrew. I am not a Bible expert. I'm just somebody who's learning. and I do make mistakes, and I admit I make mistakes. And okay. sometimes, yes, I do paint with a broad brush when I should be more, more cautious in my words. But having made three and a half thousand videos, I had to make a decision. Do I not evangelize at all because I'm going to make mistakes? Or do I go for it and evangelize and post the videos online, which I think help people? And I've been told by many people that I've, I've, I've helped them. I've helped many people out of religious cults. Not many. I, I've helped a few out. And some people have had the kindness to, 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 to thank me for that. But I do make mistakes. And I admit I make mistakes. One problem I have immediately speaking to you. Um, okay. so, sorry, I forgot your name. Sorry, it's... Timothy. Timothy. Um, one thing, and it's partly my fault, Timothy, thank you for your patience in giving me five minutes to speak at the introduction. We're saying so much, it's impossible, <laughs> it's impossible to dialogue, it's, it's impossible to respond unless we sort of choose one thing and we focus on that one thing, sir. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not blaming you, I'm not pointing the finger at you, I'm partly responsible for this also. I am a former Oneness Pentecostal, as you will know, and I am adamant and insistent that every form of oneness, however, however it's put across, I cannot accept that it is genuine Christianity because of their position on the Son of God. Their denial of the divinity of the Son of God and the divine attributes of the Son of God. Now, I will certainly admit that Oneness Pentecostals do say, because I've asked Oneness Pentecostals, do you believe Jesus is, do you believe the Son is God? And they'll say, yes, Jesus is God. So I'll ask, do you believe the Son is eternal? And they'll say, yes, Jesus is eternal. And I'll say, do you believe that the Father created the worlds through his Son? Hebrews 1, 2. Do you believe the Son of God is the creator? And they'll say, yes, Jesus is creator. I call that the Jesus trick. You ask them a question about the Son, and it's twisted. The answer is now about Jesus. And in oneness, Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. So I can ask a oneness Pentecostal, do you believe the Son is the creator? They'll say, yes, Jesus is the creator. But what they mean by that is the father who they call Jesus is the creator. It's not really a direct answer. I'm very insistent upon that. I don't yeah. believe that um, you need to get some baptismal formula right in order to be saved. Um, there is a, um, I think it's based in Indonesia. There's a Trinitarian church in Indonesia that baptize using the formula Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be um, 
casting anyone to hell <laughs> because they might have a different understanding on, on baptism to me. And I'm still learning myself. I know, you know, only know a small amount of the Bible. I, I, yeah. I've met people who know an awful lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. um, the key issue is the denial of the divinity of the Son of God. I'm a former oneness Pentecostal. And by the way, I wrote a tract for them when I was in London in 1988. On the back of the tract, it was an A4 sheet of paper. It was that size, folded. I printed thousands of them. And on the back of the tract, I offered a thousand pounds if you could prove Trinitarian baptism from the book of Acts to me. Uh, and God, God, God spoke to me. He spoke to me. I was working as a um, security guard in a bank the Broadgate Building in the city of London, got into work, was doing the night shift about midnight, got into a lift, there was one piece of graffiti in the whole building. Sprayed on the lift with a can was the word Cornelius. One piece of graffiti in the whole bank. I got my tract out, I opened it, Acts chapter 8, I mentioned that they were Samaritans, but Acts chapter 10 about Cornelius, I'd written in error that Cornelius was a Samaritan and I went to my knees and I just said Lord I don't like all this Trinity stuff because I'd been brainwashed to believe the Trinity was three separate gods there's three separate spirits and you chop God up into three parts and that's what the Trinity is and Trinitarians they don't really believe in the fullness of of, of Jesus being the fullness of deity Jesus being the father incarnate um, and I just held up my little King James Bible and I said, I don't understand all this Trinity stuff. I don't like it because it seems to be a three God belief. Um, but I don't understand this oneness belief. Just show me from the Bible what's true and I will obey it. The only thing I'm asking you, God, is please reveal to me from the scriptures what is true. And that was in 1989. And I very rapidly left the oneness movement. Um, when I saw that the Son was God, the Son possesses every every divine attributes and all forms of subordinationism, particularly in American cults. I mean, there's a British one called the Christadelphians. But when you're looking at Jehovah's Witnesses or or the Mormons or this new one from the Philippines, Sin, Sin Jong Chi, I can't pronounce the word. You'll sympathize with yeah, me. They're all subordinationists. They all teach that the Father is the deity and in some way the Son is the humanity. Oneness is the cleverest of them all because it hides behind the smokescreen of saying Jesus is God, Jesus is eternal, Jesus is greater, Jesus is Yahweh God manifested in the flesh, I love him, he's Lord, he's King of Kings, he's coming back, I love him, he's eternal deity, I love Jesus. And uh, how could you disagree with that? Because it sounds so biblical. But it's not biblical because the Jesus they're referring to is the father. No one's going to be saved because they believe in the deity of the father. You've got to honour the son equally to the father, John 5, 23. And oneness doesn't, nor do the Christadelphians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Sin John G and all the other subordinationist cults. And you have to believe the son is eternal deity, John eight twenty four. Other issues like speaking in tongues baptism they're not salvation issues and i i refuse to get involved in calvinism versus arminianism i would lean towards the calvinist side but to be honest with you i don't know enough about it <laughs> to talk about it because i've got i've got no authority to talk about calvinism versus arminianism and to me it's a waste of time really there are better christians than than, than me on both sides all right and I've also met nutters, religious nutters from both both camps uh, who it's best to stay away from. The real issue is the deity of the son of God, Timothy. The son is deity. The son is eternal. The son is creator. And oneness cannot be a genuine form of Christianity because sir, they deny that. I think it's because you're coming from a completely different. Um, oh, man. Time's about to run out, according to this. We might have to start another chat. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I don't have the, um, it says 10 minutes left, but I don't have the uh, full version of this. Um, I think it's because you come from a different perspective of what 
um, oneness with belief, um, as a Trinitarian perspective, you already have a separation of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Not nope. that they're three different nope. gods, nope. but nope. I, I understand that. No, nope. no. Nope. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are distinct. They're not separate. The fourth point of the Athanasian Creed says not dividing the substance. You see, if you if you misrepresent the Trinity, as I was taught when I was oneness, that there's the Trinitarians, they're kind of like devil people with horns, and they believe in three separate gods. And, pardon? That's not how I view Trinitarians. No, but that's what I was taught back in the 1980s. Oneness has changed. Your experience. It's not my experience. I can't, I can't speak on that. And like, and also when it goes back, I'm, I'm glad that you had the testimony that you had, but that's the crazy thing about testimonies. See, like I would say I had a testimony and I felt like God spoke to me. I was in middle school um, in a homeschool group. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with CC. It's called Classical Conversations, the homeschool group. They're distinctly Trinitarian. I'm the only one that's Pentecostal in there. And they were going over to Trinity. I'm like, I don't know if I believe that. I, I just don't know. Like, I'm not so sure that that's not what I was taught, at least. And I went over to my teacher I, as, you know, just a middle schooler who was just honestly like, I just like, I just don't know if that's that's not what I was taught. And I don't know if I believe it that way. And when we were going in a little conversation about it, bro, she's the nicest teacher I ever had. But yet in that moment, she became really mean. She said, that's heresy. You're a heretic. You're a heretic and all this stuff. And was yelling that over and over at me. And so I had to leave the class period. And I was praying. I'm like, God, what? Like, what? She told me I was humanizing him too. Sorry, I missed that part. She said I was humanizing him, and and I was like, Lord, am I am I humanizing you? Am I am, am I doing that? Like, God, please show me. Like, I'm not trying to not follow you. I want to follow you more than anyone else. Yeah. Any other denomination, that doesn't it doesn't matter. I want to follow the truth. And then next thing you know, I'm about with like verses are flowing in my head. I and my father are one. Here is the Lord of God is one. I know you disagree with that it, whole entire. It, it thing, has to be. Me, no, it it has to be finish. one thing at a time. I let you finish. I let you finish. Yeah. But it has to be one thing at a time because I but can't, I cannot testimony. follow you if, if it's a sort of machine gun of lots of different verses. It has to be one verse at a time, sir. I'm sorry. I forgot that you mm. give your testimony. I can't give mine. Um, anyways. Forgive like, me. Go on. Fig, 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 forgive me. Go on. Um, anyways, and God said that, and at least what I thought was the voice of God, and I, I still think that to this day. Um, of course, it differs from you and I on what we think God told us is that he told me that they're not, you're not humanizing me. They are. And that to me was more of a revelation of the oneness of God. And, and maybe you never had that. And maybe you had this thing towards, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm just, I'm not proving not to put my testimony over yours, but paying the two together, we, we both have testimonies from Jesus. Yet it seems to differ. So it, it this seem it seems to differ, so I don't I don't know how to deal with testimony. That's the funny thing. That's just a well, personal thing that I have. Let's just forget them. Let's just forget them. Um, point, point. The the key issue for me, I don't see water baptism as a salvation issue, nor do I see speaking in tongues as a salvation issue. Okay. I mean, if you actually push me to the absolute limit, I I mean, maybe on the outskirts of evangelism maybe something miraculous is happening but i can assure you i live in the uk i can assure you what's happening here in pentecostal churches on sunday is certainly not something miraculous that's coming from god people are just babbling they might call it speaking in tongues but it's not a salvation issue you know maybe i'm wrong about this maybe they're wrong about this no one's going to go to hell or lose their salvation because they're they're wrong about water baptism or speaking in tongues or Calvinism versus Arminianism. As I said, I've met some godly people who are Arminian. Two of the best uh, Christians I ever met who were wonderful people were both Methodists, including yeah. Howard Marshall, who died in 2015, by the way. Um, I've also met people who are complete nutters on both sides. I mean, absolutely raving nutters. Um, I agree with that. Thinking of two people... I mean, you know, there's plenty of crazy people on the Pentecostal side who would be Arminian, but I'm also thinking of two Calvinist people who ran basically one-man band places where you couldn't speak. They just talked all the time, and it was, it was basically like a little pope, a little thiefdom. The, the key thing is, who is the Son of God? If we have a little bit of a break... Um, Maybe we could log on again for another 40 minutes. 
maybe we could discuss who is the Son of God, because to me that is a salvation issue. John eight twenty four. Yeah. if you do not believe I am, you will die in your sins. So you can get baptism wrong, you can get speaking in tongues wrong, you can get Calvinism wrong, you can get eschatology wrong. Many Americans are pre-millennial of a dispensational type. I'm quite, quite a committed amillennialist. No one's a false Christian because they get their eschatology wrong. And who knows, maybe I'm wrong. It's not a salvation issue. But what is a salvation issue is who is the son of God? Would you want to have a bit of a break and maybe we log on at another time, you know, a little bit uh, later, have a break and talk maybe, about that? Maybe, I don't know if I can have, if I can do it right away or if, it, okay. if it's a break going to have to be tomorrow i work 11 to close okay um uh, just give me off. just give me three minutes to um answer a call of nature can, can i get a, give you a minute 50 so i can have a minute 50 because there's four minutes yeah left. sure or like there's a little under four minutes my apologies go ahead no go on i'm gonna listen uh for like concluding reflections yes all right are we going back to baptism what do we like let me let me know the premise real quick all right I, I, I cannot go from topic to topic to topic. I'm dyslexic. And I, I, I don't like, you know, we, we need to focus on one single topic. Perhaps that's the thing that you should decide. If we talk again, what are we going to talk on? Because we can't do five minutes on baptism, five minutes on speaking tongues, five minutes on testimony. Then it's back to baptism again. Then it's on to speaking tongues. It's it, it just going around in circles. It's best to yeah. choose one thing and focus on that, sir, I think, Timothy. OK, um. I, I will try to keep that. Man. The thing about theology for me is everything's interwoven. Um, and I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not as systemized in that, in that aspect where it's, it's harder for me to not overlap. Um, but in terms of our discussion on, because we're going to talk probably more on uh, who the son is later and our, just talking about baptism. That is my thing is you said the, the short, so the, uh, the full formula, father, son, Holy spirit, right? And then you're saying the shorthand form is Jesus' name. Well, the one that's Pentecostal, I'm putting two into it again. I'm like, so you mean Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Because how can it all be summed up in Jesus' name? And you're going to say, uh, never mind, I'm going to let you talk about it. I'm, I have an idea, but I'm going to try to be respectful of that. Um, well, Jesus is Yahweh God. He's not a part of Yahweh God, as I was taught when I joined the Oneness in 1988. Jesus is fully, completely, totally Yahweh God. Yes. Um, so in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name singular. There's one authority, you see, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, there's only one God. And Jesus yep, is wonderful. fully, completely and eternally that one God. Jesus is not a yep. part of God. Because Christ, the Son, is, is fully God, he, he, he represents the, the Father, he represents the Holy Spirit. So in the book of Acts, Christ being the Messiah can represent the Father and the Holy Spirit. Um, how much because time do we have? He is? Sorry. Uh, a, minute, a minute 18, because he is? Je Jesus, he is, is the not the the Jesus is not the Father, Jesus is not... The Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Son of God. Second John three says that. Well, he's fully the two. That's, you Pardon? say he's fully all three, though. At the same time, that, that's what I'm understanding. Sorry, speak more slowly. What? Sorry, you're saying that he's fully. Oh crap! We got less than a minute. Um, you you, that... you you can't do this if you're hurrying. It needs to be done at a slow pace, and it needs to be one thing at a time. Otherwise, it doesn't work. What I suggest we do is we we just abandon this. We talk again, okay. and. I'll throw it over to you, Timothy. You choose one single topic. I would love to discuss the Son of God. But could you just give me time to answer a call of nature? What do you mean by answer the call of nature? I need to go to the toilet. Okay, yeah, I'll, get, I'll give you a couple minutes, a few minutes for that. Just, uh, just let me know. When, if you want to do it tomorrow or, or in the next, like, ten minutes, either one works for me. Um, next... Uh, I, I got the audience. I, I just need a, I just need one minute. That's all. Um, okay. So I'll we're stopping this now, are we? And you're going to yep. send me another email. That's how it works. Is it? Yes, Is sir. That, okay. Let's forget about what we have talked about so far. Okay. And we're just going to talk about this new topic. Okay. I'll stop this recording.